Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On our YouTube channel we talk about all things homesteading and we try to implement some of those things here in our rural 100 acres in southern West Virginia. In today's video we want to give an update on the pigs in the weaning pasture, training them to electric fence and obviously weaning them from the sow, and how we're going to move them out to main pasture. So this weaning pasture was green and lush up to about a week and a half ago and um, we've turned the piglets loose. I've got seven piglets that are going on 10 weeks old. I've got three there on the hill. There's some sleeping in the barn. But um, this, this little weaning pasture has a strand of electric around it. I'll post a link to the video where we set it up to explain how we put a strand of electric in here to train them, to get them used to uh, electric fence so they respect it. And so they've had access to here. They've had access to the barn been able to come and go as they please and uh, it was been it's been pretty dry lately we haven't had any rain well just this week we had four different days where we got a good bit of rain so it's it's really moistened everything greatly and you can see how um, quickly pigs can destroy things when you introduce some soft ground when there's water there of course they want to wallow they want to play they're curious this tight confined area here really has them in here tearing stuff up so even around the feeder we have this four hole broward feeder we have um, we have a, a, a depression they've already started to make they, they get in there they they eat they stand of course they're pushing things around with their feet and then they'll even start to wallow they'll lay down they want to be near their feed so they just kind of kind of wallow that out more back behind the gate there some additional wallows but where they are right now they found something that's really interesting to them uh, a root um, something that was buried there because they are just digging a trench. I mean, if I had a small backhoe, I couldn't dig that much. So they're in there just really plowing that out. So we got to get them out of here. I don't want this area completely gutted. Um, this is a, an area that I'd like to see grow back up and, and I'll still leave the fencing here as a, uh, as a weaning pasture from, um, for the next litters, you know, next year, those type of things. So I'll, I want to leave that there. But I really want my grass to come back, you know, reduce erosion on the hill. I'm going to already have to reseed where they're over here digging. You all have made this a muddy mess. <laughs> so really the only thing that stands in my way of letting them out is really just letting them out. Over the weekend, uh, the boys and I just went around. We're going to release them into what I call the south pasture. So here behind me starts the mountain up to the top of the ridge. I've got a shelter up here, my tractor shed, which is a uh, 12 by 20 structure and uh, got sides on that that's where i'll move the feeder that'll be under shelter so i won't have this issue you can see how this is this is something that's not the ideal situation where you have a lot of mud like this um, around a feeder because it's just going to get worse and worse and worse you know these pigs are going to be on farm here for another um get your muddy nose off me another um four months five months and so the game plan would be to move the feeder would you get away from me you muddy thing would be to get the feeder under shelter so um, we don't have the ability for them to make mud and wallow this out more they'll still dig dirt around the feeder as they lick up feed and do all that kind of stuff but it won't be nearly as destructive as what we have here because once this is bowl shaped and starts to hold water then of course we just get a vicious cycle here of mud there's actually food in the feeder. I don't know why they're hanging around me like this. So um, getting them on the south ridge, what we basically just had to do was just go around and test our fence. We haven't had anybody, anybody I mean pigs, we haven't had any pigs on the south ridge uh, this year actually. I've had uh, all the sows on this side uh, just this winter actually. We, we had them over here, but uh, ever since things have grown up. And it's really allowed, um, allowed this pasture to rest in areas where we had a little too much stress. As long as it's canopy access, it's really greened up quite nicely. So I'm anxious to get these guys. Would you get away from me? You've got the muddiest nose. <laughs> Bait it. It's really allowed a lot of the, uh, the areas that get ex exposure to the sun to grow up and green up quite nicely. So I'm really excited. These, these seven little boogers are going to have a good time over here in all this fresh grass. I even had some volunteer pumpkins come up in a spot where I used to throw old pumpkins out. So it's uh, really nice to see that green up and lush up. 
And so we, we rerouted some fence, all my new excavating I done. I don't want them over there yet until the grass comes in. So I've, I've got that cordoned off. So we were just yesterday just realigning some of our fence to uh, keep them out of a certain area. So we're hoping that, uh, that their electric fence training took well and that we can get them out there and get them running around. Now I'm going to get away from them. Okay, so I'm finally ready to let them out. What we're going to do is uh, let's just open that gate back there. We've now got all the south pasture fence taken care of, uh, tested, checked. We're going to go around just check with some low spots, put some step in posts in some low spots of the ground, high spots in the fence so they don't go under. But um, the reason why I, I lost today simply because um, I came down here yesterday evening to do this and tested the fence real quick and I was only getting uh, like 1.1 on my fence tester. Um, so 1.1 kilovolt, which wasn't going to work. I need at least three kilovolts to be able to keep these little suckers behind the fence. So I uh, did some troubleshooting there. I thought it'd be something quick, but man, it, it's something that's never quick. Uh, going around trying to find where this thing was grounding out. And it took me about two hours to figure out. It was one of my corners where I had just a tiny little insulator. Um, I call them turnbuckles, but they're not turnbuckles, but they're just this these um, little insulator piece that hold the fence away from the post and the electric portion goes through while the retaining wire goes across the top. Well, pigs had evidently hit at one time or, or something had happened and those two wires had twisted and so now they were grounding out. So the uh, T post like this was completely, completely energized and of course hitting this woven fence, it just killed the, uh, killed the charge completely. So that's why um, in, in even though it took me a couple hours, there's no way in the world I could have found that. I'd have had to gone step by step through the entire five acres trying to find that. And um, if it wasn't for the fence tester, that made all the difference in the world because I could go through and disconnect different sections of the pasture fencing and keep narrowing it down. So as I disconnected the entire north pas uh, pasture, still getting 1.1. As I disconnected the in most of the south pasture, still getting 1.1. And that's why I discovered it was here at the weaning pasture. So uh, fence tester really comes in handy. <clears throat> I recommend if you buy a fence tester, buy a digital one that gives you an actual voltage reading. Again, with pigs, three kilovolts is the, um, is the uh, minimum to have. And uh, that's, that's what you're gonna have to have there. So I recommend, uh, I'll put a link down below to our, our Amazon link. Um, for this this fence tester. It's been around the block once or twice. I've broken it, I've sat on it, I've done several things, but it still works works fine. I think this is a, a Zariba, uh, so it works works quite well. So uh, you know, check that out if you're looking for a good fence tester. They make some with uh, fault arrows, so you're actually grounding out, it'll actually point an arrow to say this is where your, your ground, your fault is. And those are nice too. I'll put a link to those. I think Zariba makes one as well. But those are a little pricey. Those are about 130 bucks, whereas this one's less than $50. But again, depends on what you're working with there. Well, one thing we're gonna to do to help coerce them out of the weaning pasture is I'm simply gonna open that gate back there that I have reinforced. But we'll take the feeder up to the, what I call the tractor shed, which is a shelter we're using right now for the pigs. So we'll take the feeder up there, fill it up. Um, I let it go empty. It's almost completely empty now. Um, so we'll put it up there and of course that will encourage them to go that way. And then I'll close the gate back because I definitely want to let this spot heal up. It's amazing how much they've destroyed this just in the last two days. Like I said, I'm several days behind. So I want to get them off here. I don't want this to become completely devoid of, of vegetation. I want it to be able to grow back and heal. So you can see how quickly they can damage this stuff.
So this is going to be the shelter for them for the rest of their time on the homestead, actually. Um, they'll hang out here. This is all access to the south pasture. Uh, so the boys and I are just going to go around and just check some areas, as I mentioned, where we're going to make sure there's no high spots in the wire. And we'll stake those down with some uh, stepping posts. So we, uh, with Liam's help, we got them pushed out and they're already on the hill and they should be finding the feeder any second now because they went straight up uh, to the shelter there. So once they get their bearings, uh, be good to go. So we may have a couple escapees uh, throughout the course of the next couple weeks. Again, in our situation where we don't have anybody around us, it's not a huge deal and they'll always come back to that feed. That's why I keep that feeder full now that I've got them on this open pasture, so it always brings them back, so they don't wander off too much. You know, you're not going to leave an open buffet. So. so I think that takes care of it. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so below. And check us out on our website, redtoolhouse.com. Take care, everybody. <laughs>